Welcome again uh, to our Hatha Plus practice. I would encourage you today to have nothing in particular around you, but if you like to use blocks or things like that to assist you, do um, have them near your mat. I will come onto my knees and I will sit on my heels. Now, if this doesn't work for you, please sit in any other way for now. Uh, my intention for this week is to let be. So uh, a very lovely wish. Um, but one uh, that might manifest itself a little bit more as we're trying to release a bit through the shoulders today and oftentimes um, emotional things like worries, um, they manifest in that area and we're feeling quite tight there. If we can, we will move the shoulders in various directions, but also making sure that if yours are sore, that some practices might help you with that and others might contribute to further discomfort. So being sure that whatever you do, you're taking care of yourself. For the beginning, we will bring our ring fingers in towards the palms of our hands and then place our thumb on top of the ring finger, kind of to hold it in place. You can then rest the backs of your hands into your lap or onto your thighs. You could choose to close the eyes from here. This hand position is called Katari Mudra. And it assists us in deepening the breath. But it also helps to bring light in and I find that um, our rushing around a combination of uh, being released out into the world and a Christmas are uh, contributing to a lot of tension not only physically but um, oftentimes a lack of sleep or restless sleeping um, continuous thoughts of to-do lists during the day. It might be nice that if there are some darker aspects to your stress levels or thought patterns, to shine a bit of light onto those and once the light's shining in, there's no room for darkness as we know. Allowing yourself to feel the mudra as you rest your thumb on your ring finger. Maybe noticing the subtleties of energy shifting. Maybe for you it's more about the breath. And I invite you all to deepen your breathing. Feeling the breath moving in and out of the body. If you enjoy a full yogi breath, you can breathe from belly to ribs to collarbones and out from belly to ribs to collarbones. For some, you might add the ojai breath, light constriction in the back of the throat, just adding that to the pattern in which you're breathing. Subtle hissing sound coming and as the breath is establishing itself, you might choose to have slightly longer out breaths than in breaths. Stepping more into the relaxation response of the body. While you can keep the breath flowing just like that. On your next inhalation, open the arms. 
So you can momentarily keep the mudra, palms still facing upwards. But then release the mudra and place your fingertips onto your temples and just massaging in a circular motion the area of the temples, changing the direction of the circles. Any tension, discomfort, just noticing as we move on, tapping your fingers just underneath your eyes. And then all the fingers tapping down the cheeks. Using the fingers once you reach your jawline to just massage along the jawline. If you like, you can spend some extra time at the joint of your jaw, especially if you're cleaning your teeth at night. Might be a nice way of releasing the tension there. And sometimes we're just tight there because we don't dare to speak up or we're stressed. And then use your flat hands and kind of brush down the neck from the back forward down towards the center of the chest a few times. And you might then gently cross your wrists in front and take one hand finger so the thumbs are on top of the collarbones, the index fingers underneath them. And we kind of press downwards and releasing as we push our fingers down towards the center chest as well. Once you've reached there, tap in the center of the chest a few times. Hoping that a freed up and we will now place the backs of the hands into the side of the waist, making sure your shoulders are at ease and relaxed. On the inhale, take your shoulders up to your ears. And as you're breathing out, rolling the shoulders back and trying to squeeze the shoulder blades back and down the spine. If you can, interlace the hands behind your back and then lengthen the arms down the back while you're inhaling. Also lift your sternum, maybe your chin and your gaze. And as you are exhaling, leaning your belly over your thighs, tucking the chin in. And if that works for you, bring the head down, lift your hips and roll to the crown of the head. Maybe also lifting the arms away from your back for a rabbit pose. If the stimulation of blood flowing into the head is too much, you can sit back at any time. Releasing your arms and hips into a full child's pose. Allowing now the backs of the shoulders to open and the shoulders themselves relaxing down. Curling yourself up into sitting. Placing the backs of the hands once more into the sides of your waist. And as you inhale, lift your shoulders again to your ears. And when you're breathing out, roll the shoulders down, squeeze the shoulder blades towards the spine and downwards. And as the hands come a bit closer together, you might interlace the hands, but with the other finger on top, the odd interlace. Lengthening the arms down and only going as far as your body allows you to, lifting through the heart, maybe through the gaze. And another rabbit as you exhale, belly comes to the thighs, chin tucks in, head nice and close to the knees, and lifting the hips up, maybe sasana, the rabbit, a light inversion to stimulate the brain. And then releasing back into full child's pose, the relaxation and counter opening for the heart space and the shoulder area. From here, let your arms extend now to the front end of the mat. As you look lightly forward, your fingers are spreading out. With the next inhalation, 
coming up onto all fours. If this is where you would like to practice from, you're always welcome to come onto your knees. Otherwise, you may talk under, lift the knees off the floor. I will ask you to move quite freely, whether that's a paddling out of your legs or it is a slinky cat in which you are moving. Allowing yourselves a few more movements there. And then as you come into stillness, your right leg is lifting up on the in-breath. On the out-breath, place your knee literally down into the center of the mat. Swing the foot a bit across. Keep your left, uh, right hand down, sorry. Lower your left heel and the whole foot to the ground. Let your right, uh, left arm come down by the side and open your left shoulder. If this feels good, you can lift the left arm. If you want more, bring that arm even behind you, opening the shoulder off the floor, extending both legs, one foot behind the other, full side plank. Swing your arm down. Turn the body into plank or kneeling plank and exhale to lower down onto the front of your body. Hands stay around by the sides of the ribs. Tops of the feet actively into the mat. A few wavings up into Uttanasana as you inhale, wave up gentle cobra. Exhaling, releasing down. Inhaling, gentle cobra. Exhaling, releasing down one more, just keep that flowing. And exhaling to release. Use your hands as you inhale, come up, tuck the toes either to stay or transition into down dog for your out breath. On your next inhale, lifting your left leg up. On the exhale, again, bring the knee literally down into the middle of the mat. Swing the foot around. Lower your right heel around the right foot. Right arm along the side of the body as you inhale. Open your shoulder. You want more lifting the right arm. You still want more open the arm backwards. You're feeling very strong on this side, extend the leg away from the floor, place the foot behind the other. Full side plank or kneeling, supported side plank. Vasistasana. Swinging your arm back and down as we come again into plank or kneeling plank. On the elbows, elbows in and lower down onto the front of the body. This time, let your arms lengthen down by your sides. On the in breath, lift your legs, lift your head and chest, maybe lifting the arms. On the out breath, releasing that back down. And the palms down to face the mat. And repeat that as you inhale and lift. On the exhale, release and place your hands back down by the side ribs. Transition back to all fours or down the facing dog. Taking a walk with your feet to the front end of your mat. Hands can slide up or fingertips to the floor for a half lift on an in-breath. And folding all the way down on the out-breath. For this first round, please wait for the exhalation, engage your lower belly, and then start rolling up into the Take the shoulders shrug, and with that, turning the palms of the hands to face forward. When a mountain pose, so you may have a light look down, aligning the outer edges of the feet, whether the feet are hip distance, or it is your big toes that are touching. On your next in-breath, 
Raise your arms. Chinese angels, mudra as you interlace your fingers, the index fingers are pointing up. Arms are long and strong. And then the elbows now bending to the right. Inhaling, come to center. And exhaling, bending to the left. Now keep doing so twice more to each side. As you come back into center, touch the palms of your hands lightly together, soften your knees and raise out to fold forward. On the inhale, lengthen your spine in half. On the out breath, stepping your right foot back and bringing your right knee down onto the mat. Right hand fingertips stay. Left arm lengthens by the side of the body. And on an in-breath, roll your left shoulder back. Same option as in the side plank. You might extend your arm. You might take that arm a little bit further. That may be a gaze that's lifted, but you can always turn the head if the neck doesn't like it. Swinging your arm back and down by the side of the foot. Either all four stands or Adha Mukha Svanasana, the downward facing dog. On an in breath, rolling the spine forward into plank or kneeling plank. On the exhale, lower onto the mat. But changing things up. The right arm reaches forward and the left arm is lengthened down by the side. We're coming up onto the fingertips with both hands as if we build cups with those hands. We're actively grounding the tops of the feet to the mat. And with your next inhalation, lifting up through the head and the chest. And with the exhalation, looking down towards the fingertips by your side. Keep engaging the tops of the feet into the floor, holding a twisted back bend. With the exhale, release that and slow the arms. Come back up onto your fingertips for cups that are your fingers and hands. And as you inhale, ground the tops of the feet, lift your torso and head. And when you're exhaling, looking down towards the right hand fingertips, that same twist within the back bend. And with the outbreath releasing, drawing your hands back down by the sides of your ribs. On the in breath, rise up, tucking the toes, and then I suggest a little puppy pose on the first outbreath. Just to balance from the back bending and then either return to all fours or into a downward facing dog. That's your choice. Softening a little bit through the knees and the shoulders, gently in the sockets, but strong in the arms and in the legs. With your next breath in, raise your right leg. With the hour breaths, draw the knee in and aim with your foot between your hands. As you adjust your stance, lift your arms out by the sides, the torso slightly away from the thighs. Keep a long spine, stretch into your fingers. Launching, maybe by hopping the foot into a warrior three variation. Land your foot next to the other. Take an inhale, stretch your arms up towards the ceiling. Interlace your hands in that odd interlace. Charlie's Angels Mutra, so index finger pointing up together. And with the elbows now bending to the left. 
Inhale, center. Exhaling, bending to the right. Repeat twice more to each side. You keep the side bend moving. I can't remember if I've counted to two or to three. So whenever you've done your side bends, touching the palms of the hands together again, soften the knees and exhaling down into the floor. On the inhale, lengthen your spine. On the exhale, step your left foot back and bring the left knee to the ground. Let your arm come up alongside, that's why it's not working, the body. And take your breath in to roll the right shoulder back. Your choice to extend the right arm up towards the ceiling. You're supported with feet and hand on the ground. The arm can move further back if that's your choice. And then let your arms swing down towards the floor. Stepping back into all fours or downward facing dog. On the in-breath now, roll the spine forward, coming into plank or kneeling plank. On the out-breath, lower down onto the mat. This time we start with the left arm forward and the right arm down by the side. Coming back up onto the fingertips on both, with both of your hands, building the cups. Your choice to repeat the first variation or to lift up your legs and the head and the chest on the inhale and turning your gaze back to the side and fingertips on the exhale, holding here. Lift it while extend it as we want to stimulate the fascia a lot, helping us to release and let be. And then relax down and change your arms around, be on your fingertips. And on the inhale again, lifting legs, head and chest. And then the exhale, turning your gaze down towards the left hand fingertips and holding right there. With the next breath out, surrender to the floor, hands back alongside the ribs. Inhale as you rise to a force, suggestion, toes tucked, happy on the out breath. And you can either stay on all fours or lift your knees off the floor, finding your downward facing dog again. Notice if that dog still needs a bit of movement, or if you prefer to be still. On the next in breath, lifting the left leg. On the out breath, bringing the knee into the chest and either helping or landing the foot forward between the hands. Flying as you open the arms out, lifting the torso away from your thighs, ready right to your fingers. Leave the palms of the hands facing down. Your choice of launching into warrior. Let your foot step down. Take a breath in, extending the arms up and have a sigh to relax that. We keep changing things around. So we see your next inhalation, lifting the arms again. On the out breath, this time, interlace the hands behind your back. Draw the arms down, lift your heart, maybe your gaze. Bending your knees deeply, let the belly rest over the thighs and your arms lifting away from the back. Weight is leaning gently forward in your toes. 
The head is looking through between the legs. Allowing your hands to release. On the inhale, come to a half lift. On the exhale, stepping your right foot back again. You can bring your knee back to the mat if this is where your practice is today. If you want to keep the knee off the floor, bend it a little as you inhale, also lower your head. And when you're exhaling, rolling up your spine. To lift the arms, keep the elbows soft your palms facing down towards your head and maybe arching into a gentle back bend here. Keep the shoulders at ease, elbows soft, gaze Much more into fascia today rather than straightening ourselves out. Stay here for another in-breath. And then as you're exhaling, open arms up to shoulder height and turn towards the left. So towards the bent knee here at the front. And then as you take your next inhale, lift the front arm up and lower your left hand to the back of the right thigh. Maybe reaching up into the fingers. Your gaze could be lifted or turned out towards the side. Keep the back knee in the bend to create space in the hip flexor. And then let your next breath just swap your arms around. Right hand gently to the back of the leg, left hand reaching up. There's a major shift here in balance, center of gravity. We're being playful with that. On the next exhalation, windmill your hands down to the mat, step back into down dog. On the inhale now, roll your spine forward into a plank or kneeling plank. On the exhale, lower back down onto the front of your body. We'll take our time for back bending. As the right arm extends forward again and the left arm comes along the side of the body. For this variation, feet stay on the floor. But as you inhale now, lift your head, chest and your arms. And as you exhale, then look down towards the arm by your side, maybe to the fingertips here. You can come back to the previous version if the lifted arms is too much. And as you breathe out, release that and changing sides. Inhaling, lifting upper body, arms are lifting. And as you exhale, look down to the hand on your right. Keeping the torso lifted, feet grounded into the mat. Exhale to release that. Slide your hands down by your side body. Inhale, come to a fold. Tuck your toes. Stretch the hips up and back. As the back bend becomes stronger, feel free to stay a little bit longer in the puppy. But if your body is okay with that, at any time, can you lift up into downward dog? Making sure that if you do hold your down dog, your main focal point is the length of your spine. The legs, they can be soft, the knees bend. With your next inhalation, lifting your right leg up. With the exhalation, bringing the right knee into the chest, helping or landing your foot forward. Repeating the flying lunge, so let your arms reach back out to the sides. But now lower your left heel. Bring your hands behind for an interlace. Draw the arms down as you open your heart. The arms might be away from your back. And a humble warrior as you lean down with the right shoulder towards the inside of the right knee. Arms lifted away from your back. And you're actively engaging into the arches of the feet. Shoulders feeling sore. You're always welcome to rest the arms down. 
resisting the temptation of leaning your torso over the thighs. See if you can surrender and let be a bit deeper. Then let your arms rest onto your back, keep the interlace of the fingers. Start to turn your body back into your lunge. You're welcome to lift the arms off the back here at any stage. Coming forward towards or into warrior three. Leg lifts behind, arms may lift again away from the back. And to elongate through the spine, nevertheless, then land the foot down, take a deep breath, stretch your arms up, up a sigh, let go. <sighs> the arms swinging out a little, body relaxing. Turning the palms of the hands forward, opening up to the front of the shoulders. With the inhale, reaching the arms. With the exhale, circle the arms behind your back and as you interlace, change the top finger again. Arms can lengthen down the back, chest and gaze can open. Arms may lift away from the back. And with the next exhale, bend your knees deeply, belly to the thighs and the forward fold. Arms might reach away from the back. Always be mindful how much can you do so the shoulders feel nourished rather than stressed. Releasing your hands down to the floor. Inhaling a half lift, fingertips to mat or shins. Stepping the left foot back on the elbows. You're welcome to bring that knee down to the mat if you don't soften the knee. On the in-breath, lower your nose to the front knee. And with the out-breath, rolling up into your lunge. On the inhale, lifting the arms. Again, keep them soft. Your back knee in a bend. Starting to lift from the heart. Looking into the palms of the hands if your neck allows you to. But more important, shoulders, elbows soft in that extension. Inhale here again. As you exhale, stand up tall, arms out to shoulder height and turning now to the right. Again, that where the leg is bent at the front. With the next inhale, let the right hand come to the back of your left thigh and reach the front arm up and back. Make sure you still have a bend in the back knee to access the hip flexors, the psoas, finding the legs right up from there towards your fingertips and maybe down to the quads. On the next breath, we will change the arms around. Nothing else, changing left hand now to back of left leg, arm reaching up. Take a windmill with your hands to the floor. Step your foot back. Down the dog or all four stands. On an inhale, roll this forward to plank or kneeling plank. On the exhale, lower down onto the mat. Left arm is extending forward. The right arm is down by the sides. Palms are flat. Down to the ground, legs are extended. Last variation of this as you're inhaling, lifting your legs, head, chest, and the arms. And while you're exhaling, looking down to the right hand fingertips, holding here, reaching forward and down by the sides. On the exhale, surrender, but also change sides. With the next inhale, lifting again, legs, head, chest, arms, and breathe out and look down to the left arm, holding here. And then release, hands joining back in with the side ribs, coming to all fours on the in-breath, tuck the toes, tuck the toes. 
At any time, can you lift your knees off the ground? Return to down the dog. Making sure that your choices are informed by what you're experiencing within your body, your mind, and your breath. With your next inhale, your left leg up. On your elbows, draw your knee between the hands. A flying lunge, so torso away from thighs, arms flying out, palms down, fingers spread out. We'll now lower the back heel. As we rise to stand, come to the odd interlace behind your back. Lifting the arms, lengthen them down, maybe open the whole front body. And on your next exhalation, a humble warrior. Left shoulder to inside of left knee. Head can be heavy, arms may be lifted away from the back. As you hold here, rather than supporting your upper body with the thigh, bring your left shoulder close to the inside of the left knee and allow yourself to release forward and down. Keeping your hands interlaced, lengthen the arms back down onto your back. Reach your head towards the short edge of the mat, lifting the back heel. Yours to hop in or to fly the leg up into warrior three. Arms again can lift away from the back, but lift and lengthen through the spine, right back into the heel of your right foot. Release the foot down. Reach your side to a forward bend on the out-breath. Let your hands slide up and lengthen the spine for your inhale. And then release your hands down and your knees down. Allowing toes to be tucked under on these all four stands. And sliding the hands right down in front of the knees, but further out, so they're about shoulder distance. We've been on the crown of the head before. This one is even more intense. Please feel free to sit back to the heels if that doesn't suit. Tucking the chin in and placing the crown of the head down gently onto the mat. If done correctly, your wrists are straight underneath your shoulders. And yeah, not shoulders, elbows, and the elbows are tucked in. This is entirely sufficient, and you would encourage your shoulders to lift up into their sockets. You can stay here only if any form of what this is already, and I won't put a name to it, is within your normal practice. Could you deepen the pose? I won't tell you how this is going to work. I would love you to rather stay there if you're not familiar. Allowing blood again to flow down towards the head. So deep the breath in and out of your nose. To release this shape, let your buttocks sink back to the heels, but flatten out your feet. Bring your fists forward, stack those, and rest the forehead onto stack fists. If you like to release to the neck, carefully roll your head to one side and draw the opposite shoulder away from the ear, lengthening through the side of the neck. Let your shoulders soften, turn the head back to center. And if that felt good, try the other side, head turning, shoulder pulling away from the ear, bringing length into the side of the neck.
Then the shoulder relax, the head center itself again. Place the hands down onto the floor. Lift your upper body and take your legs out in front. Now, um, thinking you might face the short edge of the mat. So for you, it could be good to roll up the back end of the mat and pop yourself up onto the rolled up mat. A blanket underneath does the same thing. From here, bending the right knee. If your foot doesn't quite reach the inner thigh, don't worry, anywhere against the leg is fine. Place your fingertips down from here and start to wiggle out your sit bones. We start with facing now the extended leg. Please bring a flexion into the foot so the toes are facing up. Stay on your fingertips and just center yourself and elongate again through the spine as you come to sit. Feel free to bring a bend into the extended leg. And today we will take a hold of the right ankle with the right hand and we snap the elbow in towards the side. Inhaling, still sitting upright. And then with the exhalation, moving your belly towards the thigh. Lower your gaze towards your toes and take your left hand forward so that shoulder is relaxing too. If you can get a grip of the left ankle, that might be a choice, or even holding onto the ball of the left foot. With your next exhalation, let your head lower towards the knee as the pose suggests, keeping your right elbow close by your side. As you allow yourself to breathe gently in and out of the nose, exploring where you can feel the lengthening if you do at all. Deepening this shape as we usually do with each hour breath. If you feel you're quite flexible here, getting reasonably deep, you could completely engage the leg. This is just an option as you might bring the ball of the foot into your hand and at the same time, pull on the foot backwards with the hand. Nothing else changes externally. This is an internal action that only you can really notice, but you're still folding down towards your leg. Stay with that for a few breaths. Active or passive stretching, your choice of a snug in, is that the shoulder neatly in place on the right side? With the next inhale, lift your torso a little. Let your left elbow slide to the inside of the knee and do the same with the back of the left hand. Let your right arm rest alongside your body and inhale arm on the inside of the leg, against the leg and the leg against the arm. If you want to go deeper, your right arm can extend over the head. The palm of the hand in that case is facing down. Keeping a flexion in the foot on your extended leg and now bending sideways. If prepared for that, if the standing side bends, bringing more length now into the right side of the body. Stay there for a few more breaths. And then slowly releasing by rolling your arm and shoulder in towards the center. Take the knee that's fallen out towards the side and lift it up. A gentle variation to step the foot down in a relaxed manner to the front. Otherwise, take your ankle and bring the foot by the side of the hip. So two variations here. 
Coming to sit nice and upright. And as you inhale, reaching the right arm up. And with the exhale, bend the elbow and place your hand behind your head or behind your neck. If you already feel a sufficient lengthening through the triceps, you can hold here. But you might also place your other hand to the elbow and draw the elbow back. Please make sure that the crown of the head is still facing skywards and you're grounded down towards the earth with both sit bones. Half cow face pose or Adha Gumukasana. Inhaling. And as you're exhaling, let your right hand come gently behind the left arm to the outside of the leg as you twist. Holding yourself upright. So avoiding to put weight into the hand behind you. Maybe closing the eyes for a few breaths. With the inhale now, turn your head forward. And with the exhale, unwinding. We will change sides, bending the left knee and placing the foot somewhere to the inside of the leg. The third option might be the inner thigh. Bring your fingertips down, shuffle your sit bones across the floor, facing towards the extended leg. As you lift yourself upright, sitting really tall, you can choose to bend the extended leg. Take a hold with your left hand of your left ankle. And again, snuff the elbow into the side of your waist. With the next out breath, then let your belly lean over the thigh. Looking at your toes, you might bring the right hand forward, holding onto the ankle or the ball of the foot. On your next exhale, the head moves in the direction of the knee. Notice your shape first and how it feels. If you feel you would benefit from an activation, bringing the ball of the foot into the hand and pulling the foot back with the hand at the same time. So the leg engages all around, but the theme hasn't changed. We're still bending forward more deeply with each elbow. Either holding this active or a relaxed stretch, staying here for a few more breaths. With the next inhale, lift your torso lightly. Slide your right elbow and the back of your right hand to the inside of the leg. Release the ankle and let your left arm rest over the side of your body. As you inhale, roll the left shoulder back as we open ourselves up. Extension possible with the arm reaching over the head, palm facing down. Using your arm on the inside of the leg and the leg against the arm to hold your open to the side. And as you exhale, increase the extension over the left side of the body. To release. Rolling arm and shoulder inwards. Take your hand to the bent knee as you roll up to sit and take the knee with you. A more relaxed variation. Just set the foot down here in front, about hip distance. Or you can grab your ankle and bring the foot to the outside of the hip as we stack our knees. Foot at the front in the long leg is still in flexion. Reach up on the inhale with your left arm 
and bend your elbow and the elbows so the hand rests again behind the head or behind the neck the spine is long right up to the crown of the head stretch sufficient please stay otherwise opposite hand to elbow and encouraging the self upright out and tall but we bring space into the shoulder area we're still deeply grounded to the floor the earth underneath and we're quite erect in our spine with the next exhale let the left hand fingertips land behind the right arm to the outside of the leg for a twist Relaxing the shoulders down again, avoid putting weight into the hand behind, keeping the straight leg active, maybe closing the eyes for a few breaths. Noticing how you're twisting, where you can feel it, thoughts, emotions that might come up. The next inhale, turning the head forward, and with the exhale, releasing the shape, and cross your legs, arm legs extended long, come off the rolled up mat, push that out of the way, as you might want to put on jumpers, gather your things for relaxation. As usual, you can lie down with the full support of hands and arms, or you you can lengthen the arms forward on the in-breath and then slowly rolling down on the out-breath. I'm not counting today, I'll leave that up to you how fast or how slow you would like to come onto the mat. If you feel ready for Shavasana, just open your legs, open your arms. If you need any movement, please move. And once you have finished that release into the body, you can choose to be here with me in full Shavasana. If you notice there's a pull in your back, you might step your feet down in a relaxed uh, mat distance and let your knees drop in. Constructive rest instead of full Shavasana. As long as you're feeling at ease in the body, you make the right choice. Let yourself come into the stillness that Shavasana or corpse pose is offering us. An opportunity to let things be. I will share with you the poem. Maybe you've heard it before, maybe you haven't. It's well worth considering and it's called Let It Go. Let go of the ways you thought life would unfold. The holding of plans or dreams or expectations. Let it all go. Save your strength to swim with the tide. The choice to fight what is here before you now will only result in struggle, fear, and desperate attempts to flee from the very energy you long for. Let go. Let it all go and flow with the grace that washes through your days. Whether you receive it gently or with all your quills raised to defend against invaders. Take this on faith. The mind may never find the explanations that it seeks. But you will move forward nonetheless. Let go and the waves crest will carry you to unknown shores beyond your wildest dreams or destinations. Let it all go and find the place of rest and peace, and certain transformation.
Notice what might have returned by now. Any thoughts, emotions, feelings. Check back in with the flow of your breath through the nostrils. And then begin to deepen the breath. And then letting fresh energy enter the body and spend energy leaving. Maybe beginning some movement or stretching. And then returning your body into a seated form. If it feels right for you, you can touch the palms of your hands together in front of the chest, the thumbs slightly to the sternum. And maybe a subtle lift of the heart up towards your hands. And we let be or let go. There's a chance we're tapping much deeper, connecting to who we truly are. And this space. We're extending to each other. Namaste.